Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina. I want to welcome you to Christ the King Church. I'm Pastor Sam Parsons. I'm one of the associates here, and this is our School of the Bible. Today we'll be studying out of Romans chapter 11, and we're going to begin with verse 11. Before we do get into the Word, let's go ahead and let's have a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you for your Word. Father, we thank you that your Word contains everything we need for our salvation. Father, I just pray that as we study today, you'll help me to say the things that you would have me to say. Lord, help me to rightly divide the Word of God. And Father, I just pray that the Holy Spirit, who is truly our teacher, will use me to deliver the message in the way that you desire. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to go ahead and start reading from Romans 11, verse 11, through verse 24. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, I'm going to stop right there for just a minute and say this. You remember Paul is speaking to the church at Rome which consisted of both Jews and Gentiles. Now he'd already gotten on to the Jews a little bit earlier because they thought that they should be the teachers because of their heritage, because God had given many of the scriptures and the laws to them. But the problem was they were depending on their heritage rather than their faith in Jesus Christ. Now he's talking primarily to the Gentiles and he's saying, because the Jews stumbled, and didn't accept Jesus. He's saying here that they're not always going to be lost. He says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So that's who he's speaking about and who he's speaking to. He's speaking to the Gentiles about the fact that the Jews rejected Jesus and because they did that, that opened the door now for the Gentiles to be able to come into salvation and also to provoke the Jews to jealousy so that the Jews would realize that they needed to be saved as well. Verse 12, Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? What he's saying here in this verse is because they rejected Jesus, it allowed the riches of Jesus Christ to be shared with the Gentiles. But he said if their fall brought riches to the world, how much more when they come to salvation will it be a blessing? Verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. So again here he's speaking and saying, speaking to the Gentiles in verse 13, in verse 14 he says, I want them to see through you what they're missing to try to get them jealous so that some of them might be saved. Verse 15, For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Now just a little bit more explanation here. He's saying that we as Gentiles were grafted into the holy vine. 
the Jews, some of them were cut off because of their unbelief. And we, because of our belief and coming to Him and receiving salvation, have been grafted in, although we were a wild olive tree. So now we are partakers of the vine, which is Jesus Christ, and the seed, we become part of that group. And he says, the big thing here is he says, don't boast about it. Don't boast against the branches that were removed or were broken off. Because if you do, then you're not bearing the results of the root. But you have to remember, we didn't save ourselves. He grafted us in to this vine, and now we get our, our strength from the root. Verse 19, Now we'll say then, that branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God. On them which fell, severity. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be, shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be graft in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree. We can see that the Jews, which were God's chosen people, and we look back over the whole history, we can see that they've endured centuries of hardship. Their level of persecution and their difficulties have been enormous by any measure. Why have they not become people of great faith, given their history and the great prophets? But they're like branches that were broken from a tree. They look like the tree, they resemble it, but they do not have the green and growing life that we'd expect to see. You see, salvation comes through faith. They could not grasp that. They didn't recognize Jesus as the Messiah because... He didn't do the things they expected. They were expecting someone to come in to set up an earthly kingdom to break them free from Roman rule and oppression. And yet, when Jesus came, He talked about a spiritual kingdom. They could not receive that. They were not in tune with that. But we should be very grateful to God's great plan because if the Jews had accepted Jesus, if you stop and think about it, if the Jews had accepted Jesus, then salvation would not have come to the Gentiles. Also, of course, if they'd accepted Jesus, he'd have never been crucified. There would have been no way for our remission of our sins. There would have been no way for our salvation. So you see, God knew what was going to happen. He knew exactly how they were going to respond, and he had this all planned out. This is one reason why we as Christians should not be against the Jews because this was God's plan. They didn't do anything really of themselves because it was God's plan that they reject Jesus so he could open the door to us. If it hadn't all worked out that way, we'd still be on the outside looking in. But thank God we're able to be saved because he came to us because the Jews would not accept him. They also, by this time, were committed to salvation by works of the law. And they were trying to keep the law to the exclusion of faith. We know that the way we come to salvation is through faith. Now, the scriptures show us that God appointed Paul 
as the apostle to the Gentiles. If you'll remember, Peter also had some ministry to the Jews, but primarily, I mean to the Gentiles, excuse me. But Paul was primarily the, the apostle appointed to the Gentiles. Overall, they rejected salvation and our reconciliation to God is through faith in Christ and it's a wonderful blessing. Now I pointed out as I was reading in verse 17, no one can boast about being saved by grace. Grace is a gift of God. Yes, we had to believe but God even gave us the faith, the faith to believe. We're grafted in to the household of faith. And if the Jews would have ever looked, God spoke to Abraham, and it was through Abraham's faith that he was chosen, that he was the beginning of the Jewish nation. Now, it's important, as I mentioned, for us not to boast because humility is so important for us. God will deal with us severely if we're arrogant about our salvation. We have to note here, throughout these scriptures, that God never forgot the Jewish nation. God gave us a unique ministry for us to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. He has not forsaken them. We're going to see the Jews come to salvation in Jesus Christ. It's going to take some time but God's got the plan already put together. That's His desire. You remember the Scriptures tell us that God's desire is that nobody will reject Him, that all come to salvation. That's His desire. But He knows people, He's given us free will, and He knows some people will reject Him, as they did Jesus and are still denying Him and reject, rejecting Him today. We should be humbled, as I mentioned, by God's grace toward us and how He brought us to salvation. You see, none of that was through any works of our own. God's grace, His mercy, the sacrifice of Jesus is what brought us our salvation. If it could have been earned through works, then the Jews could have gotten it. There's still people in, in Christianity today who still think that they can earn their salvation by doing good works. The Word tells that, that we're saved by faith through grace, not of our own works and not of ourselves so that nobody can boast. As I mentioned, the fall of the Jews was part of God's greater plan to bring us, to open up salvation to all of us that are considered Gentiles. When the Jews finally accept Jesus, recognize who He is, then that says that their salvation will mean life from the dead. It could mean spiritual death. It could mean a lot of different things. But the truth is that God still has great things in store for the Jewish people and we shouldn't boast or think that we're better than they are. Yes, they've rejected Him, but it was part of God's plan and He has a plan to bring them into the fold and He will. Things are going to change dramatically and all Israel will be saved. 
Now, I'm going to mention here while, it's, while we're at this stage that there's a, uh, there's some people who teach replacement theology that says we as the church replaced Israel as God's people. If you look at these scriptures that I just read, that's not what it says. It says that we've now been grafted in and become a part of the vine that they were a part of. There are a few Jews who have accepted Jesus. I knew a few. Still know a few. But primarily they rejected him. But he says that now we're all his people. The Christian church and the Jews are his people. We're not excluded as we were when we were unbelieving Gentiles and the way was not open to us. But now that the way's been open, we didn't replace the Jews, but we have the great pleasure of being grafted into the same vine that they were a part of. God's going to bring them back in. And so it's not that He's finished with them. He has great things for them coming up. And there's going to be a day when all Israel is saved. But till then... We need to act like Christians. We need to shine forth. And we need to realize that God's not finished with them either. I think that's why it's so important for us to support Israel and our government and why I'm concerned about the direction I see our government heading. Remember, the Bible told us about the Jews. He spoke to them and said, I'll bless them that bless thee and I'll curse them that curse thee. That particular promise, that covenant has never been nullified. And so it's important for us to understand that. He was, Paul was pointing out here that the promises made to Abraham were not revoked. That Israel still has a significant role in God's plan. Now Paul talked about us in, from 17 to 20 in those verses and he used the figure of an olive tree which I've already mentioned a little bit. But he says the church consists of one people. There's no distinction anymore between Jews and Gentiles as a we're one people. Thus, the tree represents Israel. Some of the branches of Israel, those who didn't believe, been broken off. But Paul said the Gentiles, as he was addressing thou in this reading, he's talking to the Gentiles, were branches of a wild olive tree that had been grafted into the tree of Israel. That's what I say. We're not to boast about it because we did nothing to deserve it. But, as the branch, some of these branches were broken off, God grafted us that he called a wild olive tree, according to Paul. They were, we were grafted in, and now we become a part of that tree of Israel. We now enjoy the life of God, but only because we're connected to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is the root of the tree. If people will go back and look, Christianity has its very roots in, in, in the Jewish people. I hate to say really say Judaism because Judaism has changed a lot over the years. From the time that God made His covenant with them, until modern day. Things in, the, in Judaism have changed a lot. As I mentioned, they rejected Jesus because they felt like they had the law and the law was what was going to save them. But we're warned not to boast against any other branches, which are the Jewish Christians. We're not to boast against them. And we're also not to boast against the Jews who God is going to bring back in 
and make them part of the one tree again. The problem that Paul was talking about here in, in these scriptures was that the Gentiles in the Roman church considered themselves better than the Jewish Christians. That's not the truth. There is an issue that sometimes pops up in churches where we become very judgmental. That's one thing that God's dealt with me a lot over the years, not to be judgmental. People have issues. The church is a hospital where hurting people can come and be ministered to. It's not a country club. It's not a place where we just all come together to see if we can outdress each other or if we can show off how much money we have, how much we've been blessed. But it's a place where we can minister to those that are hurting. And if we begin to judge people by their appearance, even by their past, we run the risk of causing them to be separated from God further because we've not shown them the love of God. I've told our people here many times, I believe God's sending people to us to test us and find out, are you going to receive the people I send to you? They may not look like what you would want or expect. They may not have a past that's what you would like or expect. But if I send them to you, will you receive them? I've heard of churches that if a person was standing outside of the church and they smoked a cigarette that they would tell them not to come in their church. Now if God sent them there and they were hungry enough to come to church, shouldn't we welcome them and let God clean them up? There's an old saying, you know, you can't clean a fish till you've caught it. And the thing about it is, too often we in a church think that we're the ones who are supposed to do the cleaning. That's not so. God's the one who will do that. It's our job to help people feel at home, to feel compassion toward them, to let them see the light of God and the love of God through us. I've said this several times on probably several of these teachings that you are the only Jesus that some people will ever see. If you bear the name Christian, people are going to look at you and they are going to determine what Christianity is based on how you receive them and how you treat them. And it's sad that the church as a whole has probably turned away many people that were searching because we refuse to have compassion upon them and receive them where they were. You remember, if you stop and think about it, we've not all been saints all of our lives. We've all had things that we did, that we went through, that we're probably not proud of. But still, God received us. And so, we have to realize that we should have compassion on them as God has had compassion on us and receive them in. Paul made a comment here in verse 20 to 22. Let me look at it again right quick. Verse 20 he says, Do not be haughty, but fear. Now, a holy fear of God is appropriate in light of Israel's history, but it's not, this word fear does not mean we should be afraid of necessarily, but it means having respect, showing respect. One of the things I see in children this 
this particular generation is a total lack of respect for those in authority, for the house of God, and for the things of God. And God is not going to tolerate that. He tells us we should have a fear or a healthy respect of Him. If we're not exhibiting the fruit of godly character, we have to be concerned. I've known people that thought they were saved because they went to church. But they didn't show a lot of fruit. It was not my job to judge them. But there's times where they would have to consider themselves and say, you know, hey, if I've not really been changed, if I'm not bearing fruit, maybe I'm not saved, even though I think I am. Because see, just going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Just trying to keep the laws does certainly not make you a Christian. It's very important for us to understand that and recognize that it's grace through faith that saves us. It's not of ourselves that we should boast, but we should be showing godly character and bearing fruit if we've truly been changed. Now there's a a note here that I want to really bring up that I've mentioned earlier. It's easy to get prideful. Pride is very subtle, but it's a re very real temptation to all of us. We have to be careful. Even Christians can begin to think too highly of themselves and as better than others. You know, one of the worst things you can do is compare yourself to someone else that's not the measuring stick, and that'll only cause you to maybe come up with pride. The measuring stick is Jesus. Compare yourself to Jesus. How close to Him are you? You see, that's the big key, and that's something that we really ought to be doing. I'm not measuring myself against anybody else. The only measuring stick I have is Jesus. And if I'm not measuring up to Him, I've still got work to do. I can't worry about everybody else. I've got to worry about taking care of me. Even those of us who have been in the church for years were capable of self-deception. We've got to examine ourselves in light of God's Word and make sure we're on the right track. This, this chapter really focuses on being careful of having pride, judging others, thinking more highly of yourself than you should, and comparing yourself to others. But it also points out God does not abandon His people or His promises. He'll fulfill all those, prom He'll fulfill all those promises in His time. And as I said earlier, one day all Israel will be saved. I'm grateful that God has counted us worthy to be included. I'm thankful for the grace and mercy that God has shown us that we've been saved, that we have an opportunity to be counted as His children. In closing, I just want to give you this. The greatest gift that we have for future generations is a legacy of holiness and faith in God. It's important for us to be the people that God's called us to be and set an example for our children. And acting like a true Christian means having compassion on other people, showing them the love of Christ and helping them to see that there is an option to what they're living right now. God loves them, God accepts them, and so should we. The peace of the Lord be with you all. God bless you. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church. Follow us on Facebook, and you can also see our sermons published on YouTube.